So the following interview was conducted with Judy and Mark Merkel for the Purdue University Oral History Project. It takes place on September 23, 2017 at Purdue University. The interviewer is Stephanie Schmitz. So welcome to you both. Thanks hey. for participating. Thank you. And can we start off with when did you graduate and what did you study? I graduated in 1968, and my field of study was foods and nutrition, which then was home economics. Several name changes since, but mm -hmm. in my era, it was home economics. Nice. And I graduated 50 years ago, and I'm part of the 50th class returning, and graduated in the College of Agriculture. And what, what year was that? 1967. Ah, congratulations <laughs> and happy anniversary. Thank you, thank you. 1967 doesn't sound like that long ago. So, and that was in the, the era of the 60s. Did you get caught up in anything countercultural at the time on campus? Um, demonstrations were just beginning at that point. And, of course, the Vietnam War was during that time and so we watched many of our classmates upon graduation have to depart mm -hmm. um, for Vietnam uh, but I think overall we were very peaceful and respectful and and beginning to take an interest in the political um, side of things but not to the degree I think that, uh, that students are today. Mm -hmm. They had a few protests out on Memorial Mall and a few inside the Union and Stewart Center but it was nothing you know, there wasn't any real violent, anything like that. It was just kind of peaceful love-ins or sit-ins or uh -huh. things like that. It wasn't anything like that. And I came back, and while well, Judy was graduating, I worked in the dean's office in the College of Agriculture, and he was a very staunch person about anti-protest and everything. So he had kind of wag his finger at me and say, you aren't going to join that group. So well, who was the dean of agriculture? Dean of Agriculture, like, uh, then was, uh, there was actually an assistant dean. There was Dean Findler, David Findler, and uh, Dean Ber Vernon Freeman were the two deans, and I worked in their semester in the, had an assistantship in the dean's office. So, good experience. One thing I do remember was Robert Kennedy came to campus when he was running for president, and also during our time was when Martin Luther King. Um, so those were two big... Um, Big times, I guess you would say, where it was very thought-provoking of what was going on in our world. And they both visited campus. Yes, they did. did. Were you able to see them? I remember seeing um, Robert Kennedy in the parade, but I did not get to see Martin Luther King. I did not, but we were quite honored that they came I to the bet. university. And what about any cool rock concerts happening at the time or fun things for student life? I remember the Smothers Brothers. Do you remember them? Front row seats, I think we had it. What we called Victory Varieties, uh, which were on football weekends. That was one that I remember in particular. Um, that might be the main one. Is that the... Yeah. The we Smothers had, Brothers. I yes. Heard of them yes. They were comedians and singers and did TV uh, back then, but... Um, we always had a variety of talent, but unfortunately, I can't remember. We loved our Glee Club and Purdueettes and all of that kind of... To us, that was big entertainment, uh -huh. really, really. Did you meet on campus? We did. students? We did. We went met at a dance, actually, is where we first met. And we both lived in um, cooperative houses. Uh -huh. And so it was a cooperative, I think, social function, um, and we just lived like a block, didn't we, from each other. So our paths would cross um, repeatedly. So that's kind of where the spark began was at the dance. We never missed a dance that night, did we? <laughs> Judy was uh, in the band, was one of the majorettes. So yes. she'd walk down the street to go out to band practice every afternoon at 2.30 so I could... <laughs> Watch her walk by, and uh, since so she was a band member all four years here. The exciting thing was um, going to the Rose Bowl, the very first trip Purdue made to the Rose Bowl, and I was in the band then. And we marched in the Rose Parade, and you know, that was just a really great experience. And uh, we, the entire band, went out to California on a train. 
and you know now they wow. fly everybody. Uh -huh. so, but yeah, we spent several days on a train oh to goodness. get to to get to California for the big event. And of course we won at the Rose Bowl that year, so that was just the frosting on the cake to uh, get to be there, participate in it, and and watch the victory take place. So Did you go to football games? Well, you had to go to mm -hmm. football games. This never missed go? never missed a football game, and we had classes. And back then, Bob Greasy, who was All-American and then played in the Super Bowl, won the Super Bowl at Miami, and uh, he was one of our classmates, and so we'd see him in class and everything, just the nicest person, and so we'd go to all the football games, and I was a senior that year, and there was uh, four of us seniors, just all got in the car and drove all the way to Pasadena, <laughs> went to the football game. Now, growing up in Indiana, in a small town, this was quite an experience going out to, we stopped at Las Vegas, because the band was playing in Las Vegas, and then we went out to Pasadena and enjoyed the ball game. And as soon as the game was over, we just got in the car and drove all the way back. Part of our experiences. But. I think sports were really big. I, we, we rarely missed a basketball game, rarely missed a football game. Um, and student body support was phenomenal. Um, At that time? Yes, it really was. Do you think it it's was. changed over the years? I think somewhat. I do. There are so many other things I think for students to do where we maybe didn't have that long list of choices of things that you could do on campus. And um, but I I like to think this year the enthusiasm is on the rise and they're getting um, behind their team once again and it just is exciting for everybody. I think when the student body is an active part, mm -hmm. active part of it all. And the alums, too. So do you make a lot of Purdue games? We, we used, to, used to come. Um, we we both worked for tickets. the university mm -hmm. and worked through the Cooperative Extension Service. I worked 32 years in a small county, Adams County, which is just south of Fort Wayne, and Judy worked in the adjoining county in Wells County at Bluffton. And so we, came, we were coming back and forth to campus a lot of times. I mean, we had a lot of our training here on campus and everything, so we would come down and so we kind of kept getting tickets and everything like that. Well, then the distance and travel and then the family started growing. And so we decided we just couldn't be gone all that time. So we did not. But now we come back uh, more regular to the sports, particularly football, not so much basketball, but uh, everything we can get on the TVs now and everything. Mm -hmm. but, Makes a difference. But we enjoy coming. And uh, you, know, we, you run into friends that you, and we came from a couple of the, tents that are up for the College of Agriculture and the College of HHS and ran into people we do and hadn't seen in years, so mm -hmm. it's always kind of neat for us to come back and enjoy, but we've kind of watched campus evolve. That's been one of the big things is obviously now the roads are running in all different directions <laughs> both ways. you got to make sure when you're turning, can we go this way, but I'm sure it's it's just progress and they've got their reasons, but the, that's been the biggest thing that we've noticed. I mean, when we were here, the, the mall out in front of uh, Hubby Hall was just all parking and uh, mm -hmm. different behind the, the Union and Stewart Center here. It was a big parking lot, and they've done a fabulous job of just Landscaping fixing it up. Yeah, and, and it's more pedestrian-friendly, and I think that's uh, been a great asset to the university and everything. It takes us a little longer to find out where we're going, but we make it and, and still enjoy it. All your old landmarks. Yes, yes. Most of them are. It's kind of funny because we did a lot of studying, like at Lily Hall, which is just on the other side of State Street, and they're thinking about going in and retrofitting it and everything. And we're thinking, when we came, it was fairly new, but that's been over 50 years mm -hmm. ago, so um, it's not quite as new as it used to be and everything. But a lot of those things are still here. and. Uh, and I, I love the way all of the new buildings kind of just blend in with all the, the historical buildings that are here. I mean, it, I think it's well planned, uh, well executed in regard to the architecture and roof lines. And I think they've done a marvelous job in having it all unified and blend together. Mm -hmm. And then in coming back to campus, what, what is one thing that seems to remain constant to you? What's one thing that hasn't changed, if anything? Academically or just? It, it, anyway. Okay. Well, I think academically um, we're still highly respected. I think students 
have to work hard in order to maintain uh, their jobs. I think our university is well known throughout the nation. If you have a Purdue degree, um, it has great meaning. And um, what should I say? I think we're a reflection of the Midwest, but oh my goodness, the international influence that we um, have, I think, strengthens our uh, presence throughout the world. I really do. And I think once a boiler, always a boiler, and that that is still tried and true, it is. And when we sing that Purdue Fight song, it has meaning whether you're 90 or 19, and we're just glad to be a part of it. And we, we kept coming. Our daughter went here, graduated from Purdue, and now we got two grandchildren here. And uh, They had the opportunity to go different places, but they decided they were going to come here, and the granddaughter is in pharmacy and that it's extremely highly rated. As Judy said, they just thrilled that you come to Purdue in pharmacy, and then the grandson is in biological engineering, which is number one in the nation. So we're excited not only that they're Purdue, but that they're in the various programs that are rated so academically strong. And I think that's, to us, a lot of things change as far as facilities. You know, we still got the Union, still got the Stewart Center, and there's buildings, and we went to St. Thomas Church, and it's still on the corner and everything. So there's a lot of buildings that are the same. But, uh, and and it, go ahead. it's exciting to see the legacy live on. We were thrilled when our daughter came, and, and now our grandchildren. And so it's just kind of like um, we hope this continues, that the tradition lives on. But legacy has great meaning, I think, to families in Indiana and throughout the nation. Did your parent, did either of your parents come to Purdue? We were first generation so students. So you really got something rolling, didn't Yes, you? we did. <laughs> but they made it possible so we could come. So we will forever be grateful that um, we were able to become students. And just to, to touch on that, when you, your first your first night on campus or your first visit on campus, do you remember anything from that time? When, when arriving as a student, uh -huh. you mean? Yes, I do. I remember the day I moved in, my roommate and her parents were in the room and they were all speaking a foreign language. And my first thought was, oh my goodness, my roommate doesn't speak English. But she only spoke that when her parents would come to campus. But we became dear friends and we were roommates all four years. Wow. And that doesn't happen very That's often. Commitment. And still in touch today. And uh, so I think from the get-go, I was supposed to be here. It was uh -huh. meant to be. I do. And my just kind of moved into the house we lived in and... Uh, it just was a bunch of guys. I had several brothers at home, so I just moved in with a bunch of guys. And it just talked about where we all kind of grew up, and most of us grew up in small towns across the state of Indiana. And it just seemed like a pretty good fit. We all kind of had the same values and you know, knew we had to work hard, and most of us were first-generation students, so we knew what, the, what was out there for us. And, you know, academically, it was probably challenging because of just being away, but... Uh, we survived and worked with each other, worked together, and life was good. And the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to share? Well, my wife, back then before we were married, was Miss Purdue. <gasps> no way. Yes, oh, how yes. Cool. It was such a wonderful honor. It really was. How, did, how does one go about, what does it mean to be Miss Purdue? Do you have to enter a contest? Do you just voted like the coolest person? Uh, that? No, there, it was a, a, a competition, I guess you would say, here on campus, a different housing units, um, nominated people or whatever, but you had to do a talent. You had to present a talent. You had to go through an interview um, process. And then if you were selected, then you represented the university at the Miss Indiana pageant. Mm. So it was kind of like a preliminary um, here at the university, and then from there you went on to the representing Purdue at the Miss Indiana pageant. And so you did that. Too. I did. I that? did. Well, it was a wonderful experience. I I wasn't crowned Miss Indiana, but I was selected Miss Congeniality, which was a wonderful, uh, wonderful honor. And uh, the experience of the whole week was 
what should I say? It was a growing experience. You learn so much about yourself and each other, and and you still stay in contact with some of those people after all these years. What year were you Miss Purdue? 1967. Oh, well, we'll have to look that up in the yearbook. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good to know. Was it 67 or was it 68? I think you graduated in 68. 68. No, it would have had to be 67. Would it have been 67? Yeah, I graduated in 68. Yeah, I think it was 67. See, this is what happens when you get older. <laughs> Not certain about what year. <laughs> Well, thanks so much. That's a wrap. Well, it was great. Yeah, that was great.